So in this video we're going to discuss how deeply out of touch the Prime Minister is with reality. Him and the other parliamentarians are completely out of touch with reality in regards to the pay increase. If you haven't heard about the pay increase, I'm going to show you it right here right now. 100%, 150%, 200% and in the case of Prime Minister Andrew Holness, a more than 250% increase in salary effective April 1, 2023 and by 2024, a more than 300% increase compared to what he was earning in 2021. Okay, so let's put this into perspective. You understand so for those who don't understand the 100 percent 200 percent 250 percent increase this is for those two people who don't really understand that you understand so basically his pay is 9.2 million you see me i did normally his pay is 9.2 from 2021 his pay is 9.2 million dollar you see me i did but with the new pay increase you see me i did his pay would jump from 9.2 to 28.6 by 2024 you get what me I did? So it'd be like a man that work five hundred thousand years in me I did and then out all of a sudden in pay increase gone up to one point seven. You see me I did? It's more than three times his original salary. So before we start judging them, let's just compare other Caribbean countries how much they are paying their politicians and government officials and see if we are in the ball game or if it really is in excess what we are paying them. You see me? Parliamentarians are now going to be getting and compare them to what elsewhere in the Caribbean is paying. So the Prime Minister of Jamaica, for instance... Yeah, uh, so we know that these salaries... Are, I mean, we've done our homework. So I don't know so that these you know, salaries... You, know, put, you don't want put, me to share with the public. Put, put parliamentarians no, and ministers no, in Jamaica higher than any other country in the Caribbean region. Can you stop me from sharing? No, I'm not. Okay, so I let, am saying to you, I'm, I'm familiar with it, but my, and I'm my, sharing it... Just as a side note right here, if you notice when Dian is speaking, that is the interviewer, the finance minister is in is very defensive. I wish for her to, to list where we rank in comparison to other Caribbean companies. Just notice his demeanor, his body language, all of this thing has changed. He is trying to over speak over Dian doing the interview just as a desperate attempt to not get the information public, if you understand what I say. We are now going to be getting and compare them to what elsewhere in the Caribbean is paying. So the Prime Minister of Jamaica, for instance... Uh, yeah, so we know that these salaries... Are, I mean, we've done our homework. So I don't know so that these you know, salaries... You, know, put, you don't want put, me to share with the public. Put, put parliamentarians no, and ministers no, in Jamaica higher than any other which is country in the Caribbean region. Can you stop me from sharing? No, I'm not. Okay, so I let, am saying let to you, I'm, I'm familiar with it. But my, and I'm sharing it as well. My viewers are not. So right, let ahead, me go ahead go very ahead. quickly. Prime Minister for Jamaica is going to be over 25 million. Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister is 13 million. Bahamas, 13. Minister of Finance for Jamaica, 21.7 million. Trinidad and Tobago, 9 million. I'm quoting everything in Jamaican dollars. Bahamas, 10.2 million. In Jamaica, Cabinet Minister will be at 20.2 million. Trinidad and Tobago, 9 million. Bahamas, 10.2. And an MP in Jamaica will be at 12.5. Trinidad and Tobago, 3.8. Bahamas, 4.3. How on earth do we justify these levels of salaries in a country that we're certainly doing far worse than Bahamas? And when you look at what is happening elsewhere in the region, there's absolutely no justification okay. for this. So as you can see, we are ranking number one. We would be paying our government official or parliamentarians or prime minister more than any other country in the caribbean will be, will be the single highest paying country in the caribbean you understand so just as a little side note again if you are wondering why mr finance minister was you know so defensive maybe this 24.5 million dollar you see me really a work for you don't it? yes man so we would be paying the most you understand and here let me just go list out some of who is getting paid and what they are getting paid as well since we are here the biggest salary increase will go to prime minister andrew holness in 2021 his salary was roughly 9.2 million dollars per year plus a telephone allowance as of april 2022 it jumps to over 22.3 million for april 2023 it moves to roughly 25.3 million and by april 2024 another increase to almost 28.6 million dollars 
For the Deputy Prime Minister, the salary was over 8 million for the year, and now it moves to over 20 million in year one, over 22.7 million in year two, and over 25.7 in year three. For Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, his salary was over $7.4 million for the year, plus the telephone allowance and housing of roughly 285000 The new salary, over $19 million in year one, over $21.7 million in year two, and roughly $24.6 million in year three. Now to opposition leader Mark Golding. He also got the housing and telephone allowances, and the April 2021 salary was over $8 million for the year. As of April 2022, he will get over $20 million. In April 2023, over $22.7 million, and by April 2024, over $25.7 million. A cabinet minister's salary was roughly $6.9 million for the year. In year one, it is close to $17.9 million, then over $20.2 million, then close to $23 million. Now to the Speaker of the House. The salary was close to $6.9 million. In April 2022, it will move to close to $17.9 million for the year, then to over $20.2 million, then close to $23 million. For a Minister of State, the old salary was over $6 million for the year. It now moves to over $14.2 million, then over $16.1 and close to $18.3 million. A regular parliamentarian would make over $4.3 million for the year in salary. It will now move to over $11 million in year one, then over $12.5 million and over $14.2 million. So as you can see, basically all of the parliamentarians them get a big pay increase. It's me I a huge pay increase by the millions, you understand? And at the end of the day, you know, man, we the people are paying for it. You see me, I did. Whether by taxes, whether by where you're paying a ticket, whether where you're paying a school fee, whether all the way subtract from your pay before you even get it. We are the ones that are paying for it. You understand? You see what me, I did? And to justify their increase, they would like us to believe that because they had increased the minimum wage for we the people, they should have an increase as well. If you don't believe me, hear it from the horse's mouth himself. First of all, Barbados, Trinidad and Bahamas have not entered into public sector restructuring. Uh, the way in which they have recovered from COVID has not put them in a position that they can add this amount to of their regularity. wage bill to pay their public sectors. Jamaica is the only country in the region coming out of a pandemic that's been able to offer these levels of adjustment. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think they deserve the pay increase? the minimum wage is it really worth it personally i don't think it's worth it jamaica has too much problems we have mental health we have people that can't afford to go to school we have children that are going to bed hungry we have too much problems you see me and to waste money and your guys pockets no i don't believe it's worth it comment in the comment section if you think it's worth it and in your words how would you justify it but at the end of the day i don't think it's worth it also if you want me to go more in depth in this topic please leave some comment in the comment section and if we get enough comment we'll do a follow-up you see me also subscribe if you haven't and we'll catch you in the next one